Douglas Heart Nature Center presents Virtual Field Trips. This virtual field trip is Peak at a Pond. Hi friends, Miss Abby here with Douglas Heart Nature Center. Are you ready to go take a peek at a pond? Let's go! Welcome to our ephemeral pond. I want you to take a moment, just look around. What do you see? Do you see that? Wow, that was a fast dragonfly. Let's take a closer peek at the pond. A cricket frog and mallard duck visit. This time, take a moment to listen. What do you hear? What's that sound? I know, it's a chorus frog. Isn't the pond a beautiful habitat? Wait a minute, what is a habitat? A habitat is a natural place where a plant or animal lives. It's their home. Check out a few of the habitats we have at Douglas Heart, like a prairie, the woodlands, and of course, the pond. It's time for an on your own opportunity. All animals are different and have different needs. So that means all animals won't live in the pond. Can you organize these animals into woodland and pond animals? Be sure to pause the video at this time. The owl, ant, coyote, and squirrel are woodland animals. And the goose, dragonfly, fish, and snapping turtle are pond animals. Good job. Wow, there are lots of animals that call the pond home. But what do those animals need to live happy and healthy? Let's find out. Animals need water, food, sun, air, shelter, and space to grow big and strong. When animals have everything they need to be happy and healthy, they will reproduce and have babies. Wow, I love baby animals, and this one's one of my favorites. What is it? It's a tadpole! It kind of looks like a fish, but it's not. Let's find out what this is going to grow into. The tadpole begins to grow bigger. Soon, its back legs begin to develop. And then its front legs. Is this creature starting to look familiar to you? As it continues to develop, it is soon a froglet. Its tail begins to get smaller and smaller until... It is now an adult frog. When the adult frog has everything it needs to survive and is ready, it will reproduce to make eggs. And out of those eggs hatches tadpoles. The life cycle continues. Whoa, look at all these squiggling, wiggling tadpoles. Wow, that's a big transformation. When a baby animal has to have a lot of big changes to grow into an adult, we call that metamorphosis. Can you say that with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Metamorphosis! Great job! It's time for an on your own opportunity. Not all animals that live at the pond undergo metamorphosis. Some animals have a simple life cycle like the stuck. Can you organize these pictures in the correct order from birth to adult? Be sure to pause the video. The adult duck lays an egg, and when it hatches, a duckling comes out. It's the same shape as the adult, but it is much smaller, and its feathers aren't the same color. But then, as it begins to grow, its feathers start to change colors, and then it becomes an adult duck. Good job! Now that we have these adult frogs and they're ready to take on the world, can you remind me what do they need to survive in the pond? 
Frogs need water, sun, air, shelter, space to grow, and food. Hmm. But what do frogs eat? Frogs wait for the perfect opportunity to jump into action and catch their prey. Frogs will eat a variety of insects, from flies to crickets to mosquitoes to dragonflies. Oh, yummy! Would you eat an insect? No way! Let's find out what other animals in the pond eat. It's time for an on your own opportunity. Can you match each pond animal to what it eats? Be sure to pause the video. The great blue heron has a large piercing beak, great for catching fish. The beaver has large chomping teeth for eating bark and other plant parts. And the tiger salamander has a quick bite for catching insects. Good job. Wow, I would say the pond is a very important habitat. We know all animals need water to survive, but some animals live in the water for part or all of their life. That's why it's very important that we keep the water clean. Do you think this tadpole could just walk out of the water and move to another pond if its pond got dirty with litter? No way! This always makes me think of the humming fish in the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. The fish left the pond after it got polluted by the Wunzler's factory. Even though I love this book, fish can't walk out of a pond. So unfortunately, they don't have a choice but to stay in the nasty water. But don't worry, here's how you can help with water conservation. Be sure to turn off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth to save water. Pick up litter when you see it so it doesn't end up in our water. Reuse water by collecting rainwater to water plants. And most importantly, spread the word to others on why it's important to take care of our water. You can make a difference. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. That is a quote from Dr. Seuss's book, The Lorax. And I think it's a great reminder on how you can make a difference in the world. Speaking of books, our peek at a pond is just about over. So I thought we could finish with one of my favorite books, What New Could Do for Turtle by Jonathan London. I what New Could Do for Turtle by Jonathan London. Spring had come to the swamp. A red spotted newt crawled out from his winter bed in the mud. Help! cried Newt. I'm stuck! A painted turtle yawned, greeting the spring. Come in, dear Newt! cried Turtle. Puck! went the mud as Turtle pulled Newt free. Thanks, Turtle! You're the best! That's what friends are for! said Turtle. Yep, said Newt. His spots turned a deeper red, and he wondered, what can I do for Turtle? That spring, the swamp buzzed with life. There were catfish and dragonflies, cattails and dogwoods, polecats and tadpoles. Turtle took good care of Newt, and Newt and Turtle were happy just to be together. But sometimes, when Newt sat alone on his thinking rock, he wondered, what can I do for Turtle? In the summer, Newt and Turtle played in their favorite swimming holes. They slished down muddy banks and crashed in the water together. Splash! Playing hide and seek, Newt climbed on Turtle's back. Yoo-hoo! Turtle! Where are you? He thought he was on a rock. Boo! said Turtle, poking his head out. Newt jumped six inches in the air. One day, a cottonmouth slithered off a branch and whispered through the water. The snake was swimming right toward Newt. 
He was about to strike when Newt heard Turtle's voice. Newt! A snake! Newt plunged into the water and hid at the bottom of the swamp. Once again, Newt wanted to know, what can I do for Turtle? Fall came and the leaves of the swamp tree sailed down like little umbrellas. One day, Newt was paddling a leaf when an alligator glided up to him. Turtle was watching, but he was so scared he hit the water with a great smack and went under. Alligator turned her head to look, and at that moment, Newt dove away. Newt and Turtle hid together beneath the duckweed. Newt sighed, happy to be alive, and his spots turned redder. Now, more than ever, he wanted to know, what can I do for Turtle? Then, one day, a curious bobcat slunk through the reeds, twitched his whiskers, and pounced right onto Turtle's back. Yikes! yelled Turtle, pulling his head inside his shell. Bobcat batted with his paws and flipped Turtle over. Then Bobcat grew bored and trottled back into the forest. Poor Turtle wiggled back and forth. If he could not roll over, he would dry up and die. Newt! Oh, Newt! he cried. Where are you? Now, across the swamp, Newt was dreaming that Turtle was in trouble. What can I do for Turtle? he said. His own words woke him up. His heart bumped and stumbled. Just like his feet, he scurried to and fro, searching for his friend. At last, beneath a weeping willow, Newt found him. Turtle! cried Newt. What are you doing? Pretending I'm a bowl of soup. What does it look like I'm doing? Don't worry, said Newt. I'll help you. This was his big chance. Newt went to his thinking rock and thought and thought. Aha, he said at last. He hauled a big stick over the turtle and stuck it under his shell. He pushed a rock beneath the stick. Then he sprang up, grabbed hold, and swung. Rock and roll, cried Newt. Turtle wobbled, teetered on edge, and toppled over. Hooray, shouted Turtle. You did it! That's what friends are for, sang Newt. Turtle stretched out his neck and gently nuzzled Newt. Newt's spots turned so dark they were almost purple. The days were getting shorter. Ducks splashed off, chattering news of winter. Newt licked a toe and held it up, testing the breeze. Yep, he said, winter has finally come. Turtle nodded with a drowsy smile. Well, said Newt, it's nice knowing what we can do for each other. Yes, said Turtle wisely, these things are worth remembering. Good night, Turtle, said Newt. See you next spring. Good night, Newt, said Turtle. And they slipped deep into the swamp mud, where it was snug and cozy and warm. Sleep tight, murmured Turtle. And that is what they did all winter. The End it's time for an on your own opportunity. Write or draw a picture on how you can be a good friend to your family, friends, and nature. Friends, I hope you've enjoyed your peek at a pond as much as I have. Please continue on to do the field trip follow-up. See you next time. In the story, Newt used a lever to help flip Turtle over. Can you use items around your home or classroom to create a lever to lift different items? Good luck! Thank you for supporting Douglas Hart Nature Center.